Overall, Coffee is my second favorite black exploitation film, but it is the black exploitation I've seen more than any other. That's not a contradiction, it's just a film that I show my friends when they're interested in black exploitation cinema. It's smart, it's fun, it's sexy, it's easy to love. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at Coffee from 1973, another one from Jack Hill. He seems to be a channel favorite, for good reason. So the story, Pam Greer plays a nurse, Coffee, who's out for revenge against the drug dealers and pushers who got her little sister hooked on smack. And the film opens up in medias res with the pusher collecting the dealer to show him Coffee, who is waiting in the back of his car. She's pretending to be strung out and willing to do anything to get that next fix. When the dealer gets her back to an apartment, Coffee wastes no time wasting him. Motherfucking dope pusher! And then we get one of the most badass lines in cinema. It was easy for him because he really didn't believe it was coming. But it ain't gonna be easy for you because you better believe it's coming. Man, that's cool. This movie hits the ground running, and after that opening scene, we slow down just a bit to fill in some backstory. We find out Coffee isn't satisfied taking out just these low-level drug dealers and pushers. She is mad and frustrated with the whole system. Uh, like pretty much every revenge movie, Coffee takes place in a universe where the police and the politicians do not protect citizens from crime and are, in fact, part of the problem. It takes place in our universe. Now you're a cop. Now why don't you just arrest them? It's not that simple, Coffee. The law can't do that. You bet it can't. And I know why it can't, too. Because the law is in for a piece of the action. After some conversations with an ex-lover slash current cop, Karcher, Coffee learns a few of the other names of people in this drug game, including a guy by the name of King George. Carter is one of the few cops who's not in on the take, and one evening his partner calls him and asks him one final time if he wants a cut of this action. Carter refuses and says that if he goes through it, he'll do whatever he can to report him and expose the whole thing. This goes about where you would expect it to go. Shut the door. The doctors inform Coffee that Carter has suffered quite a lot of brain damage and his prognosis is not good. And so, Coffee's revenge is further motivated and will continue. I mean, obviously the cops aren't going to help out, right? So, the next person in the pecking order is cock of the walk, pusher, and pimp King George. King George, by the way, is played by Robert Doki. You might remember him from Robocop. So, Coffee doesn't know exactly how to get to King George, but she remembers that years ago she had a patient who used to work for him, so she tracks her down. She gets some information out of her, what kind of women he likes, uh, where he keeps his drug stash, you know, to prepare herself for what's about to come. And then it's time to infiltrate King George's stable of high-class prostitutes. She is, of course, successful in this regard. I mean, who could say no to that? A few of the other girls in the stable don't really take too kindly to Coffee, and this leads to a pretty entertaining fight. This also leads Coffee to find out the identities of a few other people higher up in that drug-pushing pecking order. How high will she go, and who will she find there? Watch the movie. That's enough out of me as far as plot goes, let's talk some highlights. Highlight number one is, of course, Pam Greer. This is definitely her best movie, and yes, of course I know, she was in Tarantino's Jackie Brown. This is her best movie, and I love Jackie Brown. Here though, she is an absolute sensation. She's gorgeous, she's smart, she's fierce, just amazing all the way through. And you know, I know I say this all the time, but here again we see a great example of how a female-led action movie should be written and played. You know, when Coffee comes up against a big guy like Sid Haig, she doesn't punch him and he doesn't fly back like he just got hit by a truck and then the audience doesn't roll its eyes in disbelief. No, she uses her smarts. And not only does she use her smarts, but she also, of course, uses her beauty. She knows exactly how to use that, where she can get herself into positions where she can use her ingenuity to win out over much bigger opponents who are distracted by TNA. 
you know, an exploitation film, the kind of movie that can have a strong female character who is realistic and believable and you can look up to and admire. Not some modern Hollywood bullshit. But watching someone like Pam Greer play coffee is so much more satisfying than that tripe. Anyway, back to the good parts about this movie. Well, the dialogue. I mean, I've covered plenty of Jack Hill films in this channel, so you know that I'm a fan of his writing, and here he's at the top of his game. This movie has so many great lines. Some of them were even written by Pam Greer herself. And beyond the dialogue, the story itself is a fast-paced, tight revenge movie. Exactly my kind of thing. And speaking of the revenge, I really like how procedural it is. Uh, coffee starts out at the bottom with the people that she knows who are immediately responsible, and then she slowly works her way up as she gathers more information. This gives the film quite a lot of forward momentum, which I really appreciate. I mean, in a lot of revenge films, the victim knows exactly who the responsible person is uh, right from the beginning, you know, in I Spit on Your Grave or Thriller, Cruel Picture. Or you have those other kinds of revenge films where the protagonist generalizes and becomes a kind of vigilante, uh, like Ms. 45 or Death Wish. Coffee is kind of unique in that she does have a goal, it's just she doesn't know exactly who is at the end of that goal, and it's a lot of fun watching her figure that out. Final highlight, of course, is the acting. You know, aside from Pam Greer, uh, Robert Doki turns in a really great performance here. Sid Haig, of course. I mean, what a treasure that guy is. Uh, and I was really happy to see Bob Miner here, even though it is a pretty small role. But the movie's not perfect. Like me, thinking about Pam Greer, it has some shortcomings. Except I'm really not short at all. Tall Cummings? Well, there's really not much I don't like about this movie. Anything I might complain about would be more wishful thinking than a shortcoming. For example, I have nothing against the soundtrack here by Roy Ayers, but it's not as iconic as some of the other soundtracks in Blaxploitation. Coffee is one of the best Blaxploitation films. I mean, some people think it's THE best Blaxploitation film, but it doesn't have THE best Blaxploitation film soundtrack. I mean, you got Cooley High with that cool Motown soundtrack, you've got James Brown doing Black Caesar, Marvin Gaye doing Trouble Man, Herbie Hancock doing The Spook is Sat Next to the Door, Isaac Hayes doing Shaft. I mean, Coffee's not at that level, and that's a little unfortunate, since the movie is beyond that level. For a realer complaint, I guess if I'm being honest with myself, I don't really like the idea of talking about skin in terms of food. Uh, coffee, mocha, chocolate, ugh, this kind of, it rubs me the wrong way. It fetishizes skin in a way I'm not quite comfortable with. I know that's probably just me being weird, but you know, we don't have to fetishize Pam Greer in that way. I mean, she's smart, she's beautiful, and she just has a fantastic, huge pair of... <laughs> 